Welcome to my video documentary Doctors Are Killing Me Etc. I would like to get rescued, which may not happen. I would like to help people who are in a similar situation by sharing my experiences. First I narrate the obstacles that stand in my way. There is a misunderstanding in this part of the world hat being a female automatically gives you the power and the right to rescue me and bombard me with your opinions. Why you are entitled to think the way you do, but people whom you bombard with your views may not agree. They may not consider your opinions to be polite. If you are a woman who works as a paid listener, you are having doors open for you as you walk because men have arranged that for you. In general, your techniques like shouting down people's cherished opinions when you don't even know them cannot win you friends. You have poor judgment and would be a failure in any kind of business where civil courtesy is a must. But men feel it is not fair you have poor judgment and have built you a niche where you can be paid or praised to receive. You have been awarded a job where you work with women who are either equal to you in mental status or you have a legal advantage over them, so you can say mean things and they must listen. This is, in principle, brothelry. If someone says you have worked a miracle in their lives, I will take that into account. But I see what type of person will find you to be of help. Sadly, after videos became common, the younger generation have poorer reading skills compared to us. And if you cannot read this documentary, why should you be able to help? People's linguistic skills and conceptual intelligence have declined after videos became a day-to-day -day affair. A person whose conceptual intelligence is poor is not in a position to help people if thinking is needed. A society that is woman-dominated is riddled with thousands of agencies and organizations. The mental health service is just one of the myriad personal services where persons who have a below average IQ or are somehow poorly can get help and hide unattractive parts of their personality from the mainstream of society. However, these myriad personal services are not useful to the entire humanity. They have nothing to offer but people, and these people just read off advice printed on a government-provided leaflet. They cannot advise on any subject about which a leaflet has not been created. I am sorry about my opinion that you are free to disagree with. I just feel about myself and others who are wrongly referred to agencies and live in isolation, humiliation and lack of human contact, which, outside the medical realm, would be an independent inducer of death. Therefore I feel these persons wearing a mask should be outed. My solidarity is with other sufferers. Yes, I am suggesting that agencies and women support are not in a position to help. They are an obstacle between me and life. If you disagree with anything I say, I respect your opinion. If laypeople, even the authorities, understand that doctors have decided to abandon me to the forces of nature or God, this can sometimes lead to cooperation from doctors agreeing to help. But ultimately, this will be up to the free will of individual medical professionals if they want to medically intervene. 
If any person dies in the care of medics, God is usually the only witness who will know if the doctors chose to let the person die. If doctors put a teeny weeny little pill into a hospital patient's mouth, if doctors did something even more inconspicuous to accelerate a sick person's death in a hospital, nobody is likely to know. Note that my allegation is claiming that doctors in general, rather than a particular individual, are neglecting me medically. If someone had said this to me, before it happened to me, I would have doubted it was possible. But I would not have doubted that this allegation is physically possible to be true. It is just from my experience of the world that I would disbelieve the problem. I would assume this problem is localized and limited to one or more unhelpful doctors. I feel I am a minority who has experienced the incredible. I now change the subject. Over the years, I have been getting thousands of personalized hate emails and have saved some of them in my overflowing email folders. I cannot afford a secretary to screen my calls. I would not need one if I was not a dumping pit for hostility and inappropriate attention from female employees of petty businesses who make things go bump during the day for me. People ask all the time. What do I want to see as an outcome? Pay attention. This introduction contains the answer to this question. I fancy I may be a target for international shunning. Yes, I said international shunning. After all, I am not a frog in the well like you and your grandmother. I apologize for being so damn courteous, but I have got used to getting nothing but ridicule and apathy from other laypeople like myself. I want to reach outside the local area and outside of agencies and agency-dependent people. I assert, contrary to popular opinion, that agencies and organizations cannot make it better for me. I also feel that agencies and organizations cannot solve most problems. They have been appointed so that they might receive, while offering a minuscule help to service users that is derived from repeating statements printed on leaflets. This video documentary contains short stories in chronological order. Each chapter tells you at the start which year or years are being narrated in that chapter, and whether there is a medical story, a non-medical story, or both. There is one line telling what the story is about. All this happens in the first 20 seconds of a video. So, you can browse my chapters and listen to any chapters that pique your curiosity. There is no violence in decency or immorality, either in writing or through pictographic representation. I also add the letter N as in November to the names of all videos that have only non-medical stories. There are 23 chapters after this introduction containing anecdotal evidence. The first 10 chapters are mostly non-medical stories, except for chapters 7 and 8 that narrate the unlawful death of Regent Exeter. Note that these are only my opinions and not stated by the law, which is the ultimate guideline for most folks who believe in safety. Identities are disguised beyond recognition. Their non-medical anecdotal evidence in the chapters may reveal what kind of person I am. It may partially justify that comment about international shunning. The medical stories that follow contain anecdotal evidence. Some of these events are narrated here. They are supposed to explain to the reader what all happened to make me feel doctors have chosen to stand back and let me deteriorate and die in God's time. There are two things in my life that I would like to get rid of. One of them is my cardiac squeezing which has migrated to my head. It keeps getting worse and has been left untreated, never giving a diagnosis. Giving ambiguous and contradictory statements about what I suffer from is the doctor's long-standing habit.
In response to the lack of intervention, I am going downhill slowly and surely. For the first time, in late 2023, I have started taking a risk by refusing to see a consultant after the hospital did a bogus test. They pretended to do a brain MRI in December 2022. In Chapter 19, I explain why I feel like they only pretended. A friend says I should keep on obeying doctors and cooperating. If there is an a 1% chance of getting help I should take it he says. But I feel that always necking forward to win the jackpot and FOMO or fear of missing out does not help. I have reached the stage of not needing to worry about antagonizing doctors by this note. I have either already done so please tell me how or doctors are hell-bent on refusing help. The other thing I would like to be read is bondage to women. I am neither comfortable nor happy having only women. If you are familiar with doctors just keeping you sick, you would know it is not something lawyers can help with. I have already tried patient advocacy. Some people advised me to ask social workers and Samaritans to help me with this problems. People are giving such advice because they have dung for brains, or people feel that I have dung for brains, and purposely give advice that won't work. You can ask why I don't get a second opinion if I am not happy with my doctors. Doctors do not like me to get a second opinion. When I do get a second opinion, the new doctor wants to do this and that, but they are forced to refer to my existing medical records. Once they go through the existing records, the new doctors realize that I am that type of person, a person who should be treated in that way. Their tone, their attitude, and their behavior change completely. I have seen this time and again. What I fear is, like a donkey led by the nose, like a bad carrot. I would be deported to India over not wanting to be on intimate terms with social workers. If all other women can do it, why can't you? A lawyer asks. I request here that I would prefer not to be deported to India, and if such were intended, I would like to die, preferably before the deportation takes place. Nothing has changed to make me want to return to India. However, I would like to die now, as a way of getting rid of these two unwelcome conditions. But dying is my second choice. I would prefer to live, but need to be rid of the two conditions. Title of video, Doctors are killing me etc. Type, Documentary. Goal, Solemn Entertainment etc. Author's name, Mohini Hersam. User ID, Horsetail. Author location, Dublin. Audience, International. Date created, 29th of May 2023. Get your anti-sickness pills out. You are going to hear my real voice, albeit for a very short time. I shall refer to any person of male gender who features in these real life anecdotes by the letter Z and any person of female gender by the letter Y so that no two persons have the same name even if they do in real life. Most proper nouns presented here such as names of places as long as they are not names of people will be identical to the real ones but I have not given any indication as to which proper nouns has been dubbed with a false one. I am easily traceable by authorities and lay people alike. I have left out my name in the body of this audio recording.
only because my name and that of other people in the stories are not relevant to the content of this documentary. I who have created this documentary can be contacted by texting plus four seven four four two five nine seven four five zero. My name is Q Q Q. I am sixty four years old. <coughs> I am making a <coughs> YouTube documentary about my situation. I hope my God-given voice doesn't sound too ugly for the entire human race to tolerate. Anyhow, I think I'll be a good girl and not inflict my voice on the public. Therefore, I shall be using a machine voice, uh, the one belonging to English Female USA, Jenny at HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.ttsfree.com That way, nobody will need to listen to my grinding and repulsive accent. However, I am making sure you will at least briefly hear the voice of the author of this document as you are doing so, as you are doing now. You will also briefly see my face during the course of this documentary. My mugshot will be presented here along with uh, other uh, real-life human shots, but the rest of the pictures will be AI generated. I will leave you guessing as to which human photo is mine. A combination of my voice and face, albeit present in only one or two of the 22 chapters in this book, shall serve as my signature in place of a physical signature or name. A combination of my face and voice. I'll, uh, this is my way of uh, claiming ownership and responsibility for my creation. If relevant, this is my way of copywriting my worthless document. You are listening to the introduction at the moment. It will soon switch to uh, the female machine voice. I have selected this voice not because it is sexy, but because it is loud, clear, and inexpensive. Chapter 1 will follow immediately after the introduction. Everything hitherto is in the machine voice. <laughs> 